Jason Andrewickett with you on the program today. And and look, I apologise in advance for any people who uh, are tax uh, accountants, tax lawyers, people that work for the IRD. I apologise in advance for a broad sweeping generalisation. But honestly, they're not the most likeable people, are they? The IRD department um, for just about everybody in New Zealand aren't necessarily what we'd see to be the good guys. So, hey, we might uh, we might cheer and and perhaps even raise a glass to a particular individual who is taking on the IRD with the help and support of the Free Speech Union. Jonathan Ayling joins us now. Jonathan, kia ora. Good morning. Taking Good morning, on, Andrew. Taking on the tax uh, department, um, champion of free speech. But, I mean, this particular case is somebody that actually worked for the IRD. Now, we've talked about this in broad details beforehand, but um, somebody who got in a lot of trouble with their boss for posting something on what was an internal forum. What's the details? Yeah, so there's a woman called Christine Massoff who uh, has worked at IRD for some time now, an older woman just going about her everyday life, no other issues related to employment except the fact that she has this very peculiar belief that uh, men can't become women. Mm -hmm. And uh, so was uh, surprised uh, and, and yet also, you know, uh, uh, pleased when IRD started to decide that they would pay for period products okay. for individuals uh, at IRD. That's what set this off. Great IRD move. went and put period products in all the bathrooms there. Great move, and, IRD, except for one detail, right? Well, it, it, but when I say all the bathrooms there, I mean all the bathrooms there. Yep. Because, of course, uh, it's not like only women can menstruate, right? And so... She then went on a forum uh, called I Are Woman. It says what it does on the can. Yep. It's, you know, it is a forum for women who are at internal revenue. Mm -hmm. And she said, isn't it fantastic that finally we're at a position where uh, we can have free period products? This is something that she had believed in for many decades. Yep. She simply pointed out, isn't it ironic that now that men can menstruate, suddenly this is available? I love to and, see that Christine's uh, got the the ministry gift of sarcasm there, Jonathan. I think that's a, that's a gift which that is that is is too rare and should be defended at every occasion. And 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 look, you, you can see the tongue in her cheek already, right? Yeah. You know, it, 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 this is this is clearly a some somewhat facetious comments, yeah. but but pointing to a a, a more serious point, uh, certainly you can't in any way construe this as abusive or harassment or or, or anything um, more more significant in that regard. And uh, and and Miss Massoff was sent uh, quite a remarkable. Uh, internal uh, letter uh, threatening discipline wow. if if she ever made a comment like this before uh, sorry sorry if she made a comment like this again and yep. and, and look she, th this is a case we've had for a little bit of time now she contacted us the uh, the friday afternoon before christmas and uh, and so she said look i need your help and i said well look we're, we're knocking off in a few hours actually <laughs> send me through the material and, and we'll have a look yeah and once this uh, letter came through, I was shocked. In it, they said that uh, IRD is an is a is an inclusive workplace. It mm -hmm. is a place where tolerance and 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 diversity are paramount. Yep. And so, in the name of inclusivity and tolerance and diversity, don't you ever dare say something like that again. Wow. And and this, you know, it, it, it seems that. Uh, that uh, accountants may not be the, the the most up to speed with irony, because if they were, uh, though probably it's more uh, less the accountants and more the HR department yep. here. Uh, w w I mean, we can laugh, Andrew, but but I I consider this actually just remarkable in many ways that mm. that, that a woman um, would be threatened with discipline. She th th I've been told that uh, she's been told if if they. I uh, hear um, comments like this again in the future that there will be a disciplinary action and yep. that her position, you know, the inference of that is her position is in question. And and to us, it, it's just unacceptable that a, a government department like this would think it's within its remit and its responsibility to police the speech of individuals within a forum that is specifically designed 
in this case, for women to talk about issues that relate to women. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and so look, you can't make this stuff up. It's quite extreme. Uh, we contacted IRD initially to discuss this case. They refused to meet with us. We then lay a, uh, a complaint with the, uh, employment relations authority. They mm -hmm. refused to have mediation. Yep. Uh, these are people who are so convinced by the righteousness of their indignation at someone else's opinion that really they're cutting off their nose to spite Jonathan, their face. Jonathan, to be and fair, if, uh, if, You've ever had conversations with the IRD about whether or not you owe them money? Again, it, it, it's not a fluid conversation. They're quite <laughs> cut and dried about a lot of things, including this, apparently. What, what, what's interesting here, Andrew, is is the the, the way um, we see certain personalities associated with it. There's a man called Peter Mercy, who is the uh, Secretary of Internal Revenue, uh, and so the Chief Executive of IRD. And yep. and it's not the first time we've, we've had a tango with uh, Mr. Mercy. Uh, when he was the Secretary of Transport, the Chief Executive of the Ministry of Transport, about three years ago, we had a very similar case where one of his subordinates was threatened in a very similar way yep. after she used the term uh, biological male mm -hmm. uh, in reference to a trans woman and 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 look andrew this is this is the definitively orwellian feature of so many of these conversations where they take the words that mean one thing and and use them to mean the exact opposite mm -hmm. and and so uh you know we need to keep these things in mind uh what is a trans woman well, it, it, it's what um, previously we called a man. Yeah. And so we, we see the manipulation of language and then far more importantly, the the coercion uh, and the compelled use of language. And if you don't get along uh, and, and, and use the words that you're told to, you will face considerable backlash. And so uh, we think that there's a story there probably beyond yeah. the uh, employment relations question of this particular woman. Uh, what sort of role does someone like Mr. Mercy, who is the co-chair of what is called Hepunamu, the the uh, uh, public services uh, rainbow diversity network. Yeah. It doesn't sound like they're very keen on diversity in many ways. Now, a personal grievance is being filed by Christine against the IRD with the support of the Free Speech Union, but just wanted to have a, a discussion a little bit about the context. Does it matter that uh, Christine was threatened with a disciplinary procedure rather than uh, one was carried out? And... In some ways, is it a, a aspect of disproportionality? Now, what was said uh, is being punished and in in that, okay, we, we've already established why this is, is weird and ironic, but actually a disciplinary procedure is that, okay, we're going to dock your pay, we're going to fine you, we're going to slap you with a wet, wet bus ticket. Is it just, um, I suppose, what harm has been done here if a disciplinary procedure has been threatened but not carried out and... And is it really any type of punishment, I suppose? Yeah, really good question there, Andrew. Um, absolutely. Without a doubt, uh, the, the the threat of process is the punishment in okay. itself. And, 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 and this is where we the, the biggest issue for free speech in New Zealand are, are not hate speech laws. It, 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 they're not cases before the courts. Yep. It's self-censorship. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that every day, millions of Kiwis go out to work and many of them work in environments where they say, stay in your lane, yep. keep, keep your opinions on these subjects to yourselves. And, and, and it's not just within the employment context, far more generally, Kiwis are told if you speak out on these issues, there will be consequences. And that's not the way a free democratic society should operate. Look, w within a workplace, when you create a forum for internal discussions yep. on issues that are not related directly to work, you have to accept then that people might have conversations not directly related to work. It was kind of part of the whole point. Yeah. And I would suggest there that then to create this punitive approach that suggests, well, not even suggests, outright instructs, the letter says, if you think you have an opinion that others might find offensive, don't share it. Now, I'm, I've am i kind of got used to biting my tongue. It's the nature of, of what I do, but I also happen to share the ministry gift of sarcasm with Christine. Uh, and sometimes I can't control myself. Somehow I've managed to get away with stuff on Rima over the years, and uh, I don't know, perhaps people have taken it in the right spirit. But there are occasions, Jonathan, where I go, you know what, that thing that I've got in my head, I think it's funny, I think it's pertinent, I think it's delightfully ironic, but I'm not going to say it because I value the relationship I have with this person and I just don't want to annoy them. There is, I suppose, a, a case for tongue biting there is a case for as 
it says in First Peter, for some gentleness and respect in our dialogue. Just because we have a freedom to speak doesn't mean we should always use it, particularly when it annoys people. Without a doubt, uh, Andrew, self-control is is critical and indispensable. But the whole uh, emphasis there being on self-control, okay. not other controlling. And so uh, we, without a doubt, the, the easiest illustration here is, is when a government seeks to uh, decide what can and cannot be said, there's no place for that within a free society. Mm -hmm. But I would also suggest that the biggest reason people self-censor is not because of our politicians, it's because of our employers. Yep. Far more often people are concerned about paying their mortgage and getting in their paycheck than they are about what the MP down the road is going to think of them. And, and the whole point here is, Andrew, we need to create a culture absolutely that thrives on free, robust, respectful, civil dialogue. And what that means is absolutely sometimes we will we will choose to say something in a, in, in a different way than what we might otherwise, or maybe even on certain occasions not say some things. Yep. But that is self-control, not others dictating when and how we say that. And honestly, lack of tact isn't on the, uh, the statute book. As a, as, a, as a criminal offence, really. Uh, there'd be a lot more people in prison if it was, perhaps. But what does justice look like in this case? What are you hoping will be the outcome for this particular individual? Look, the the employment outfit that we're working with thinks it's quite a clear case of discrimination there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we do not allow, we are allowed to speak freely, you're not allowed to act freely, which means you're not allowed to take discriminatory actions. Yep. And, and, and and so imposing silence on people is a form of discriminatory action. And so, uh, look, we we think that there needs to be some sort of compensation here mm -hmm. for uh, Ms. Massoff and for the the employment process that she's been put through. And and just the, the glaring error Errors in the way that IRD perceives their role and the values that they hold around inclusivity to then impose that on others. The, the role of the IRD is to provide revenue structured support uh, you know, as the ministry responsible for that. It is not to decide the, their employees' thoughts and speech processes. And so we, we really need to see this recognized within uh within uh, th this particular department. But but more generally, uh, I think it stands to set a precedent for the way we expect the public service to respect, to truly respect the diversity of its workforce. And that includes intellectual diversity as well. Mm, hey, I appreciate the work that you do, your thoughts on this matter, and I'll keep working on my tactfulness. Uh, not, not a natural leaning for me, but uh, hey, working on it. Jonathan Ayling, uh, thank you so much for joining us once again. Cheers. Hey, thanks very much for joining us in the Rima studio. Thanks very much for watching the interview. It's kind of nice to have an audience, actually. And if you did like what you watched, then do give us a like, do give us the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more interviews like that one, or perhaps even better, subscribe and those interviews will come straight to you. Don't forget to turn on your notifications and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.